Hello, and thanks for joining me on another episode of the Tech Exec Podcast. I'm your host, Aviv Ben Yosef, and today we are going to be talking about Slack. And I'm not talking about Slack, the chat software that you're probably wasting way too much time on and letting it disrupt you all too frequently. That's a matter for another episode. I'm talking about Slack as in Slack time. It used to be called Flex time by some people way back. Slack means having some buffer in your day-to-day work so that you can actually handle it when you need to do some extra stuff. When I talk about the fundamentals of having a very high-quality, high-impact engineering team, I usually say it all boils down to Slack expertise and autonomy. I believe that Slack is that important that it's one of those free tenets of an effective team. What do I mean exactly? We're talking about more time, but what does it look like on your day-to-day? All kinds of companies have different ways of trying to instilling Slack. First of all, when you're lacking Slack, you're going to notice because people are usually getting to the end of a sprint or to the end of a deadline, huffing and puffing with their tongues out, and they always just barely get everything done or even miss the deadlines regularly. When you're working like that, you're always in some sort of a crunch mode or even blitzing and working very hard, people tend to cut corners and people tend to stop thinking long-term and they're definitely not going to be doing anything innovative or novel that has any risk because they do not have the time to risk even going to the bathroom another extra time. And yes, I'm exaggerating, but I see this all too common where people think that their only lever to get their team to be more productive is to keep crunching on those deadlines. If this is how your average sprint retro looks like, then you're having a very major lack of slack. Hey, it rhymes. But slack does not mean that you're going to be taking all of your deadlines, adding 25% buffers and saying, all right, let's go with that, because that's not real Slack. Well, you can say that it is, but I agree that it's not healthy. I do like deadlines, and I do like having to push things forward. Let's, first of all, review a few ways that companies try to put Slack in. I think the most known example is Google's 20% project time. You get a day a week, or something like that, to work on your own projects. I don't think they can do whatever they want to. Like, you cannot work on just, I don't know, your own personal open source or stuff like that. But you can do pretty much whatever you want. You can work on an entirely new product that is completely unrelated to what your current team is doing and stuff like that. I do not agree with that. I do think... It's a step in the right direction, but I don't think that what people need is just time to do whatever they want. Having hobbies is something they should be doing outside of work. It's not the same as saying they're learning something. If someone asks to take a day to learn something that they think would help them, go right ahead. But simply doing whatever they want to be doing for a year, I don't see the value in that. Another example would be hackathons. Yeah, you probably host a hackathon every quarter or every six months or once a year. And you feel like, yeah, that's what we're doing to add innovation. And it's better than nothing. And you take that hackathon, hopefully you're not doing it over the weekend. Those couple of days that you take from your regular work to do the hackathon are some sort of a slack time because you're taking it out of your usual sprint but it's not often enough in order for it to be as effective as it can be. Or another example is this whole sabbatical thing that I'm seeing more and more companies doing, which is where they work in six-week cycles, and then the seventh week is a slack week. These weeks aren't weeks where people just do whatever they want to do. They are expected to be working on the actual product that they're working on but do something that's not planned or directed from product so i would not expect them to i don't know work on some gadget raspberry pi thing because it's interesting for them during that week what i would expect them to do is maybe look into technical debt maybe have a spike trying to integrate some sort of a new framework simply to see if it's even a good idea add some tests, fix some bugs, 
hack together on something with someone from UX because they have an idea and that sort of stuff. It's kind of like having Skunkworks work on your calendar so that they can try things out and see what comes out of it. But it all should be directed at making the product better. It's not simply doing that to feel good about being cool engineers. In order for Slack time to be productive though, I believe that it has to be either this option, which I just described, of having the extra time at the end of your sprints, or if you're going of the lowered velocity way, which is what most companies do because they do not want to touch their sprints too much or do not want to affect the whole organization. If you have to do it that way, make sure that it's not simply lowering your standards. I do not believe in that at all. How you should be approaching it though is by stating your sprint goals not as tiny micromanaged tasks so that every couple of hours is accounted for for each and every single person because that means they do not have the time to look into anything. You should be having broader goals. Product should say we should have this feature done by the end of the sprint and we all know what are the nice to haves and what are the extras and then engineering would have the space to go deeper when they think they need to and to try new things when they see that they have some time to do it but this is only possible if their calendar is not full to the brim similarly to what we talked about on the last episode for making time for you to think as a leader if your engineers do not have any time to do some extra thinking and invest in trying to do anything worthwhile and simply are busy crunching out new code, they will not have the ability to do anything novel. They will not have the capacity to bring on extra innovation and impact. And I've been saying this over and over and over again. What you want are not costly employees who are basically code monkeys getting the tasks fed to them from Jira and churning out input as tasks and coffee and output as features. That's not the way it works because what you get there is an insourcing department. It's not an outsourcing department, all right, because they're your employees, but they're not going to be bringing any extra value. They are not going to be showing their product mastery. They are not going to be doing anything that will help the business move the needle unless they were specifically told to do exactly that. You want people to have the time to think of new ideas, to try things, to make the system better, to improve performance so that suddenly your costs are lower or developing new features takes less time or suddenly Because you have better monitoring, you have less issues or issues are handled faster. Your SLAs improve, your customers are happier, your engineers wake up less at night, meaning they are more productive during the day. There are so many opportunities for innovation and improvement going on on the day-to-day of the engineers, yet so often they are so bogged down by tasks and deadlines that do not allow them to even look at what's right beneath their noses. You have to let your team have some time to do this. Otherwise, they're like school kids with a very tight schedule. So to make Slack work in your company, if you're going with the reduced velocity, again, I'm recommending going with smarter deadlines and actually talking about goals, not just making people do things because product told them exactly how it should be done. And if you're going to be adding time at the end of your sprints, which sometimes actually makes sense because that means you can take stock of what has been completed, see the impact of some of the features in production, and only then commit to what you're going to be doing in the next sprint. You can then use that extra slack time between sprints, which does not have to be for the entire organization together. You can have teams working out of sync, in quotes, so that Sometimes a team takes the extra slack between sprints and not the entire organization has the same cadence or even if they have the same cadence, have sprints going on on a different schedule. And that allows a team to sometimes 
do the extra digging. And sometimes it means that if you have a team of, say, five people, between sprints, two can actually help shape up with product the big ideas for the next couple of sprints, while the three others are making things better. You should be very clear about what you're expecting Slack to mean in your company, though. You cannot simply say you have 20% extra time, do stuff with it. Slack is for improving our system. Slack means that you need to be actively working and thinking about how to make things better. And if you end up simply being on Facebook, that's not what we're looking for. You should be speaking up and you should be telling me. And we expect to see results out of the Slack time. We do not intend to invest 20%, even 10% of your people's time without seeing results. You can give this a go, for example, over a period of a couple of months to see how people react and adjust accordingly. Good measures of Slack being used properly are, for example, as I mentioned, seeing bugs being approved, seeing new technology being tested and upgraded regularly, and having innovation be brought from the team, from engineering, two products saying, hey, how about we try this? Or, hey, would it be good if we could do that? Or, I just saw that you cannot do this thing with Gmail. Having people come on with their own ideas and agendas for this extra time that they now have helps them be empowered, helps them take ownership of everything, and helps everyone as a whole keep improving the product incrementally so that it always gets better and better and better instead of simply having to pile on more and more features without having a second to make sure that they all still work together and without having a chance to fix whatever technical debt or issues you're having. Even something as simple as having the extra day to work on your tooling is life-changing because all of a sudden People are no longer making mistakes during deploys because the deploy is fully automated. Or people can now know exactly who is using what server because you added a Slack command that tells you who is using which server and you can take ownership of it. All of a sudden, you do not have to wait until everyone answers and, and give them 30 minutes because you can know immediately. Amazing. This is exactly the kind of things that you want people to do. If you have any questions about Slack, and if I wasn't making myself clear, please let me know. You have my email in the show notes as usual. And now to our corner, question of the week. If you recall, the question from last week was, what's a trick you have on your calendar to make things better for you that you have found to be working? One thing I saw several people say is that they have a recurring meeting to block out time in the morning or in the afternoon so that they know they have time to think, catch up with emails and stuff like that without anyone putting meetings on their calendar during that time. I love that trick. I do that quite a lot. You should go ahead and do it if you're not doing it already and see how it affects you when you suddenly can get to work and have an hour to think and decide what you're going to do instead of rushing into the day-to-day -day immediately. This week's question is... How did you last celebrate a win at your organization? I want details. Did you simply send out an email with a GIF? I'm saying GIF, not GIF. Did you open up a bottle of wine? Did you let the team have a day off? Did you go to an escape room? I want to hear all the details. Please, please, please send it to me. I'm waiting. I love these stories. My email is in the show notes as always. If you have any other questions, feel free. Thank you for joining me and talk to you soon.